So this is where you do your thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so, like, if you wanted to, to say, I want to start a song from scratch. Yeah. You'd come up here and you would just show I'm, me how it, it would. Let me see. I think we got a real hit on our hands. Oh, have you ever sang? A little bit. I mean, not really. Then you can do I mean, this. In the shower. Yeah, then you can do this. Just go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His name is Sonny Moore, but to his millions of fans, he's known as Skrillex, the king of the dubstep. At just 27, Skrillex has become the most visible face and haircut of EDM, electronic dance music. A genre Rolling Stone says is defining this decade's youth culture. With a laptop as his instrument, mixing together pulsating beats and driving rhythms, Skrillex has been whipping audiences into a frenzy since 2011. It's a career choice that has served him well. His net worth has climbed along with his popularity to the tune of a cool $20 million. And this year, Skrillex moved into the mainstream thanks to an unlikely partner. You and your buddy Diplo, mm -hmm. I know, uh, collaborated with, with the Beebs. Is that what you call him? The Beebs. <laughs> we do call him the Beebs. That's right, the Beebs. Their single, Where Are You Now, has spent 15 weeks in the top 40 and shows the incredible versatility of this EDM prodigy. This is sort of called the song of the summer. Um, how did you all get together with Justin Bieber? Well, we met him and during New York Fashion Week last year, actually, at the Sun Nightclub. He was super polite, and that night, he sent us over an acapella that he just recorded. And Justin just sounds so vulnerable and real, and it, it kind of makes sense where he is at in his life right now. A lot of your, your hardcore fans were not really excited about this collaboration you know, with Justin Peep. I, I wouldn't even say a lot of my hardcore fans. I think my hardcore fans like get what I do and like like the fact that I don't care and like I'm not, you know, I'm not afraid to fail or I'm not afraid to do something that everyone doesn't like. Sonny, when your career really exploded and really started to take off, were you surprised? I mean, did you think, wow, what's happening here? Or did you think, I no, this makes sense? I was surprised, but I was, I was excited and I was hanging around Dead Mouse for a long time. And he created this like amazing buzz and ripple with his music. And he would take me on tour and we could, you could just feel it happening, you know, not even just with me, but with the whole sort of scene in general. If I was a Martian that you know, landed on Earth and you had to tell me what you do and what your music's all about, how would you do it? It's so hard to describe my music because it's also so diverse and different. How would you describe the shows for you from your vantage point? Like the most energy you can ever see. It's, I mean, it's awesome to see that much energy from a group of people. I know that you were asked to perform at the Grammys and you said, no thanks, thanks but no thanks. And, and it was because you didn't think that what you do would really translate on television, is that right? Yeah, people don't realize that it really is about the whole, like the whole thing, the crowd is the show. And I don't think you can capture that on TV in certain situations. You perform so many shows a year, I think, in 2011, 322 shows. It was something like that, yeah. I mean, that's almost one a day, and I know you double book shows on certain days, right? Yeah. I mean, isn't that exhausting? It is, but um, if, you're, if you're keeping healthy and you're exercising, like, you, you know, your body is actually pretty amazing, and... Um, Thank you. Yeah, your oh, body no. is amazing. <laughs> How do you feel about people who may not 
understand really what you do and claim that you're not really a musician. You know, there are some people who say, oh, this guy, he just pushes a lot of buttons yeah. and turns a lot of knobs. You've heard that. Yeah, yeah. What, does that tick you off? No, not at all. I think, like, parents just don't understand. You, <laughs> you think <know>? that's it? <laughs> it's easy for people that feel like they don't understand something to immediately bash it because they feel insecure that they don't understand what's cool and what's new. But all I say is, hey, if, if it's that easy, go, you can do it too, then. Do you have memories of being a little kid and just being enraptured by music or did it slowly evolve? How did it happen? I was that kid banging on a pots and pans, like just making music any way I could. And is when my dad first put on Riders on the Storm by the Doors. That was the first time I remember hearing music. And that kind of changed my life in the sense that, like, I, I remember having these little toy harmonicas that I would just play all the time. Just whatever I can get my hands on, you know? You seem very confident in what you do and really uh, good at taking criticism and not letting it bother you. But I know that you had a lot of challenges when you were younger with bullying, in fact. Yeah. You're always bullied if you're an emo kid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that happened to you. Yeah, but nothing like crazy happened to me to where it like scarred me for life. You were homeschooled, right? After you were 11 years old, you were homeschooled? Mm -hmm. But in a, in a, I understand a pretty relaxed homeschool yeah, yeah, environment. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then at 16, you learned something that I think affected you pretty profoundly. Yeah. I learned I was adopted, but I mean, at the time, everything is so profound when you're 16, you know? And, and intense. And intense. And that was like another reason why I was like, I'm gonna go discover myself and travel and make music. I found this band, I met them online, and I flew out to see them. They were called From First to Last, and I did that record with them when I was 16, and then like spent about two and a half years touring with them. This when you're 16 years old, what do your mom and dad think of that? Um, they're probably like, what's going on? But they were, you know, um, really supportive of me doing music. And I mean, my dad is like my best friend. He's, you know, the only person I can get advice from. Um, my mom passed away um, only a couple months ago, actually. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's all right. Um, she was also the most caring woman in the whole world. I think what she taught me ultimately was just taking care of your people. You know, when people come over, she was just always like, you know, making sure everyone had, you know, you want something to drink, you need water, you need some food. Like she was that mom. It's, Must be hard. Sure, of course. And how's your dad doing? My dad's awesome. My dad's the strongest person in the world, you know? Like we, we like, can express our emotions for things together. And with my sister as well, we're there for each other. But, you know, we're also trying to be very optimistic and, and really appreciate life, like, like everyone should. I read that your parents uh, were Scientologists. Your dad still is. Yeah. But you are not. No, I, um, I'm not a Scientologist, but my dad does it for himself. And it's something that's helped him forever. And why? Why do? You, why didn't you want to? If both your mom and dad. Well, I uh, think I think uh, the the main part is that it's like you dedicate so much of your time to it, and my time was always spent doing music, and I wouldn't have been able to do what I'm doing now if I spent my time doing that. Scientology gets a terrible rap, you know. Yeah. What do you make of that? I think. It's easy for a religion like that to get a bad rap because it's so sensationalized and people want to get clicks and people want to sell magazines at the end of the day. And like you got Tom Cruise jumping on couches and that's like, you know, with Oprah and that whole thing was like hilarious. Being an artist and knowing what it's like to be taken out of context or like at least to be criticized so much in the media, it's like, what is their intention at the end of the day? They're just trying to get a reaction. And I think if you're doing something that makes you happy, and that's, that's all that matters. There's a new movie coming out this summer starring Zac Efron. Have you heard about this? 
What is this again? It's called We Are Your Friend, and it's about young EDM DJs. Yeah. And I want to read you a line from the trailer. OK. If you're a DJ, all you need is a laptop, some talent, and one track. Yeah. It's that easy, huh? Zac Efron, he's an actor. He should be in movies, you know? I'm not mad at him. The, the trailer looks so corny, I got to be honest. It's a movie. It's supposed to be entertainment, so I hope they have, they hope, you know, they do what they do. It's not what my life is about. It's not the um, accurate representation of what I've done and where I've come up through and what I'm doing currently. At the end of the day, EDM is young music, and I like that. I don't want to make music for, no offense, old people. And I don't mean, I don't <laughs> no mean, offense taken. but I don't, but I mean like, I mean like a mentality though. It's yeah. How I really mean, I don't care how old you are, but I'm like so young at heart. You know, I'm 27, I'm not young, but I'm. That's pretty but, young. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm 16 and I've always made that, I've always made music for the 16 year old in me, as cheesy as that sounds. Electronic music is a platform. Like there's all this controversy about the word EDM, but it's more of a platform than a genre. It's how music is made. So yeah. No, it makes total sense. I'm in like what young people are making. That's why I have my record labels because kids are doing it better than every year. Kids are getting better than us. Like they're gonna be better. Like you know, in ten it's years you're gonna see a baby make a song. You know, like really, or less. Who knows? You're gonna see babies making good music. EDM is known for a couple of other ingredients, and I'm talking about drugs like Molly, yeah. ecstasy, LSD. Yeah. An article in The Guardian in 2013 said, quote, Molly's ascent to the mainstream lexicon has roughly coincided with the ascent of Skrillex. Who said that, The Guardian? The Guardian. I, I always did it for the music. I don't do Molly. I'm not telling kids to do Molly. My music is... I feel like not that good for, for those type of drugs because it's so much more intense. Like, I wouldn't be able to do 300 shows a year if I was doing drugs. It'd be impossible. And that's, I, I'd rather just do music. That's cool for me. Let me ask you about your hair. Ask me. I'm writing. <laughs> what? Tell me about this do with the shaved on the left side. It's a haircut and like I decided to do it one day because I was bored, okay? I'm just so used to it too. Like, <clears throat> like I always get to this point, end up like thinking, am I gonna grow it out? And then end up shaving it and calling my friend Nicole. And uh, who's that right now? It's Chris. Oh, Marshmallow. <laughs> I'm gonna it'd be funny if you shout him out. It? Yeah. Yo, 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 Marshmallow. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? <laughs> How you doing? How you doing later? Yo, well, I'm gonna meet up with you later. This kid, Marshmallow, speaking of new talent. Really? This kid just remixed the Justin Bieber song, Where Are You Now? And um, oh, this yeah. kid is making great music. For really? Real, on that young, new. Great, maybe I'll get to interview you one day, Marshmallow. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna hit you back later, Marshmallow. All right, man, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry. Don't worry, good. bro. It's all good, it's all good. Peace, Bye. dude. But back to your hair. Yeah. So, so that's kind of your look, but your ex-girlfriend, Ellie Goulding, said she had the haircut first. You know that, right? I think she thinks she did. But in reality, maybe we, we, we might have gotten the same time, who knows? So I'm gonna give you like four counts and then you go, ooh, just like it is. I think it's awesome. What do you I think? think it's pretty tight. Can we send it out? It's a festival smash. It's for the children. It's for the children? <laughs> for the kids. It's for They're the kids. So you'd be 37 yeah. years old in 10 years. You think you're going to be doing this or doing something different? or Always be involved with music. Always be involved with creating that awesome little world within a world, you know? 
and like always, you know, looking out for the next people coming up is something that's always important to me. She'll be looking for the next marshmallow. I'm looking for the next marshmallow, this next s'more. I was gonna say the next graham cracker. The next Hershey bar. Hershey bar. Are you hungry? I'm so hungry right now. I can eat a whole Halloween s'more. All right, cheers. cheers. That was fun. Yeah. Really fun.